What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 video. So in this video I'm going to be covering the Orbis Toolbox Alpha that was released by OSM a few days ago. Now normally I wouldn't cover an alpha build of something for the PS4 because generally obviously alpha builds are very unstable and buggy and they're not feature complete yet. But I really did want to cover this because I feel like it has the potential to fundamentally change the way we use our jailbroken PS4s in future by unlocking a bunch of new customization functionality um, and other ways of kind of configuring stuff that will be useful, as well as also kind of taking the PS4 a step closer to some of the things that you can do on a jailbroken PS3 and on a JTAG or RGH to Xbox 360 as well. We're finally unlocking some of that functionality in the UI that we kind of didn't have access to before. So that is why I wanted to cover this. So because this is an alpha build, it's currently only available for firmware versions 5.05 and 6.72, although I'm sure a 7.02 and 7.55 version will come out once it gets into maybe a beta stage or a full release. But for now, it's just 5.05 and 6.72. But first, this video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is a compact wallet designed with RFID blocking plates that can hold up to 12 cards with room for cash. I've been daily driving the black aluminium Ridge Wallet for over a year now since my initial sponsor spot for this. And honestly, guys, it's a great product. It helps cut down on that awful wallet bulge you get with traditional wallet designs that are far too big and bulky. They also come in over 30 different colors and styles, including some more premium designs like this awesome burnt titanium look that I'm going to be switching to from now on. The Ridge also makes a perfect gift for Father's Day, which is coming up soon. So if you haven't picked out a Father's Day gift yet, I highly recommend you check out the Ridge. They've got their own Father's Day guide on the website that can help you pick out the perfect Father's Day gift. So check the link in the pinned comment below and use code MODDED at the checkout to get a 10% discount. So thanks to Ridge for supporting the channel. So if you do want to give it a try, basically what you need to do is download the .bin file for 5.05 or 6.72 from OSM's GitHub repository, and then download the pre-release bin file, put it into a payload injector like Netcat GUI, make sure your PS4 is connected to the internet and you have your PS4 IP address entered into the host box of the payload injector, you use port 9021, and then you basically just use the bin loader payload on your PS4, inject the payload from the computer and that will get it up and running. Now you should probably try and run Mira first because I found that if you run just this .bin payload on its own then you kind of get into this kind of weird uh, soft reboot loop which can also happen when you run uh, Gold Hen as well. So I found that if I run Mira first and then run the Orbis toolbox it seems to run pretty well that way but again it's a pre it's a pre-release alpha so obviously um, there's going to be bugs and stuff. So you may run into some of these issues where it's boot looping or giving you error messages. So that's just the way it is in this state. So anyway, as you can see, I've got it running here on my PS4. So basically the way that I'm going to do this is that I'm going to show you guys what this has right now in the pre-release and what it will potentially have in future and how it can kind of change the way that we use a jailbroken PS4 in future in terms of different configurations and customization. And uh, yeah, you'll kind of get what I mean, hopefully, by the end of the video here. So, so once it's loaded, as you can see, we've got the Orbis Toolbox Alpha showing up in the top right hand corner. And essentially what this is, is it's kind of a way of displaying different UI elements on screen, as well as being able to basically hook into the way that the PS4 uh, creates its menus and, you know, draws stuff on screen so that you can create your own custom menus and custom uh, options, sub menus and custom uh, like displays on screen so that you can just add more customization to the PS4. But it means that a lot of other things are going to be able to utilize this in future. So for example, if we head into the settings menu, as you can see, we've got a new option added into the settings. And this kind of wasn't really uh, possible before. It wasn't really used very much before until OSM really kind of dug into, you know, how to do this. So, for example, you've got this Orbis Toolbox option in here. And if we go in here, there's a bunch of different options. You have power options, so you can do a soft reboot. You can do a full reboot, shut down, suspend the PS4 from there. You've also got the package installer integrated in here, which normally is only inside the debug settings. But as you can see, it's been put in here as well. 
You also have a uh, system settings, so license activation for disabling and enabling codecs for media playing, I believe. Uh, of obviously external hard drives, so you can unmount and format your external drives. And also MP debug, which is for prompts, debug prompts that are normally just for, I think, dev kits and test kits, which appear on screen, uh, which uh, you can enable here on a standard PS4. And then we have the Orbis toolbox settings itself, which has a bunch of different options in here. Now, some of these options, like this dev kit panel right here, this is something that you can see displayed here in the top left hand corner. That's something that you normally only see on a dev kit console, possibly a test kit as well, I'm not sure. But definitely on a dev kit is typically what you'll find this box on. And normally the only way to get that on a jailbroken PS4 before was to use a updater POC by Lightning Mods, which was an app that essentially kind of reconfigured your hard drive and changed your target ID to a dev kit to kind of make your PS4 appear as though it was a dev kit so that it would get that box showing up in the top left hand corner as well as some other features. But the problem with that is that it could kind of screw up your console. Um, sometimes when you tried to revert back to retail, it would fail and you'd have to like uh, reinstall a recovery firmware to get your system back to normal and, you know, wipe all the data off your PS4. And um, plus, if you kind of lost power to the PS4 as it was converting to a dev kit, it could screw up your console. So that's why I never really covered it in any videos when it comes to flashing stuff like that. Too many people can have issues and end up bricking their consoles. So this is just a nice way of getting access to those same UI features without having to convert your system kind of to a dev kit using that updater POC. So it kind of gives you that ability without having to risk your console in any way, which is pretty awesome. So there's also the ability to show title ID labels on your apps as well, which is actually a really useful feature here because obviously getting your title ID can be important for getting updates and stuff for it or for whatever you're trying to do to the game. You need to know the title ID typically. So normally you might have to look it up online if you don't have the disc because normally the title ID is on the disc, but just having it there on the home screen, right where the actual app is, it tells you right at the top left-hand corner of the app, this is what the title ID of that app is. Again, a really useful feature just to have that. You know, I would have that permanently enabled uh, whenever I would be using my jailbroken PS4 if I had this feature. So yeah, and obviously the dev box in the top left-hand corner can show your IP address, which currently it's not showing anything for mine. I think there's some issue with the DNS or something that's stopping the IP address from being displayed in that box. But generally it should show your IP address and how much storage space has been used up in your hard drive, as well as your model name and serial number and the system software version as well being displayed there in the top left-hand corner. But um, that's not really what's mainly interesting about this because obviously it has a bunch of additional features as well. For example, it's got the Show Orbis Toolbox Shortcut and App Home Shortcuts. So with that, for example, you can just launch the Orbis Toolbox Settings menu from here, from straight in the Home menu, instead of having to go into the Settings to go and access it. So in addition to that, you've also got the Game Overlays which I think is more of a custom thing that OSM has implemented here, where you can basically show your CPU usage, your thread count, your RAM usage, video RAM usage, um, temperatures uh, for the CPU and the SOC. And you can also choose where you want that to be displayed on screen when you're in game, whether you want it on the right or the left or in the center. Um, so I'll just select right here. Um, so in addition to that, you can also save your settings as well, which saves it to a config file so that the next time you run the Orbis toolbox, you can basically just load the settings by selecting load settings, and that'll load all of the settings that you had previously saved. Plus you can also load the config on startup. So when you load up the Orbis toolbox again, it will re-enable everything from your config. So all of these options will be enabled again, and all of the game overlay will be enabled without me having to manually go back in and re-enable everything one by one, which is a pretty useful feature to have that built in. So yeah, that's pretty much what it has right now. Let's go ahead and run Call of Duty Ghosts here just to see. There you go right there. There's the UI showing up in the top right hand corner. CPU usage, thread count, all of that stuff. And there we go. My console crashed. I did have a feeling that, that enabling all of that might screw something up. But at least you got a chance to see that there in the top right hand corner. Showing all of the different stats for the system when running a game. 
So these are just some of the kind of small things that this is capable of, because the reason why I think that this is a much bigger deal than just showing some CPU stats when you're in a game or just, you know, having access to a few more UI features, some stuff on screen, showing your IP address, showing your title IDs on your games. Although, although that stuff is useful, this has the potential to do a lot more in future. So obviously in the short term, I'm talking about just kind of convenience level stuff, like again, having the title IDs showing up on the apps, having maybe your IP address in the bottom left or bottom right hand corner, like Webman Mod on uh, jailbroken PS3s, uh, you know, having maybe FTP active, you know, like an FTP status to tell you if FTP is enabled or not, maybe some kind of like PS4 debug status to show if it's loaded or not, just on the screen all the time on the home screen so you can see what's enabled and what's not. Obviously, that's stuff that's just kind of generally useful. But going beyond that, we can think of how, you know, a lot of payloads right now that don't have access to this, they typically use things like configuration files. If we just take like the app dumper payload as an example, when you have the app dumper payload, you have to put a configuration file on the USB drive if you want to change the way that it dumps a game. That INI file goes in the root of the USB drive and it has options like, you know, do you want to dump just the game or the patch or both? And do you want to shut down the app dumper once it's finished dumping or not? And you can't decide when you want to start the dumping process. You just, as soon as you load the payload, it, it reads that configuration file, sets up and starts dumping the game. Whereas in the future, when other payloads start taking advantage of these kind of UI elements, these other menus that, that, that can appear in the settings, then what they can do is move those configurations for those payloads into its own separate menu option so you would run the app dumper uh, as an example and with this implemented what would happen is it wouldn't start dumping the game straight away instead it would create a shortcut on the home menu to configure the app dumper which you would open and that would take you into the settings menu its own custom settings menu that has the options in the menu just like the orbis toolbox where you have options like you know do you want to start the dumping process now right at the top and then below that you have an option to switch between you know just dumping the game or just dumping the app or dumping both and also having the option in the settings menu to you know like a toggable option to shut down the ps4 afterwards or not so i can see a lot of payloads using this instead of having configuration files that you have to put on the usb that you have to edit on a computer Instead, you can have those same settings options for all of your different payloads integrated into the PS4's settings menu instead, which I think is just going to be a lot more convenient and just a lot better generally uh, in future. And I can see pretty much all payloads moving to that system in future. And going beyond that, we can look at further customization as well, like what the PS3 has when you load a plugin like Webman Mods, you get a whole separate, you know, settings option with loads and loads of different configurations for the plugin that you can edit within the actual PS3's menu itself within the XMB. Well, you could probably have something similar with this as well, having that kind of customization. Also, potentially going further than that, if you look at the Xbox 360 with JTAGs and RGH Xbox 360s, we had whole custom dashboards like the Freestyle Dash and the, the Aurora Dashboard as well, uh, which are, you know, set dashboards designed specifically for the functions that you get with a jailbroken system. And we could potentially see something like that here in future for the PS4, a whole custom home menu, a whole custom XMB set up specifically with features for jailbreaks which would just be a huge improvement to what we have right now. So that's what I expect to see this develop into in future. So yeah, that's why I really wanted to cover this, even though it is still in the very early stages and it is still a pre-alpha. So yeah, great work by OSM Old School Mods who, you know, did all the research into getting this working. And I can't wait to see where this goes in future. So hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.